Um, well, thank you so much for, for meeting with me. I absolutely loved Jules. I was so taken back by it. It was so surprising and wonderful and sweet. Um, I know you from a bunch of your producing credits. You have such an uh, impressive history with uh, The Farewell and Little Miss Sunshine and Sunshine Cleaning, Loving, Safety Not Guaranteed, Away We Go. Um, this is your third uh, uh, directorial feature after Puzzle in 2018. Um, why pick Jules for your next your next directorial effort? Yeah, it's a great question, Cortland. You know, it, it's I can't predict what I'm going to fall in love with, right? It's uh, it's kind of like human beings, right? We don't know. <laughs> Uh, what we're going to love, but when we do, we do. Uh, for me, uh, I always look for things which are one of a kind. And when I read this screenplay, I went, there will not be another movie like this in the next 10 years. This is the one that will have these elements. Uh, and then I look for movies that stories that have something of depth to them, something meaningful. Uh, uh, and finally, most importantly, it's got to entertain. So that's the sort of trifecta. Entertain, have something to say, and be one of a kind. And it's got all of those elements. Um, so I, you were talking about these elements. Um, Gavin Steckler's script is just magical. It, it's not very flashy, yet it still very much gets the point of cross. Um, when reading the script for the first time, like, was there a specific scene or line that made you like, this is, this is it? Uh, you know, there were some, and sometimes you read something, Cortland, which is really, really funny on the page. And it's not the funniest line, right. most moving line when you see it in, in the, in the movie. So yeah, there were a number of them. Uh, but I think I, I think for me, it was, uh, this is something that I wasn't sure I could embody. Because how do you, you know, it's all these diverse elements that don't usually go together. A story of great humor, yes. as you pointed out, great inventiveness. It keeps going into places that you would never imagine it's going to go. A story about uh, a, a guy with early onset dementia, but it's not depressing. Uh, no. Emotional. It's got great emotion and it's got a four foot 11 inch alien. Now, <laughs> all those things don't usually go together in a movie. Right. So when I read it. It wasn't like I read one line that just said, oh, man, this I got to make. It was like I read so much that was so diverse. I said, can I do this? Can all these can anybody do this? Can they all be in the same movie? Mm -hmm. totally? uh, and uh, I knew I had to try. Um, the writer, uh, Gavin. Uh, it comes from a more comedy background. I know he worked with um, fellow fellow producer Andy Daly on Review, which is a wild show. I highly recommend everybody who hasn't seen it to watch it. And then also um, Bo Burnham's underrated Zach Stone is going to be famous. Um, those shows are a lot more broad, I would say, than what, what this is. Um, did, when collaborating with, with Gavin, um, did the comedy... Was there a uh, difficulty trying to balance that tone? Yeah, I think there the, it, I, it was, and that comes out in the editing. Uh, you, I spent a lot of months, the longest I've edited on any film, whether as a producer or as a, as a director, uh, to make sure the tone was consistent all the way through mm -hmm. uh, and held all those different elements, right? You've got a genre element of science fiction and you've got, which we downplay, we make it as, you know, we yeah. make that smaller because it's really about the people uh but you've got to balance all of that and so yeah it 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 is somewhat challenging the key for me Cortland was that each of the actors played the movie straight you could have read that screenplay and played every scene for the joke and that would have been very broad and it would have been a different movie. It's not the kind of movie that I'm interested in seeing. I'm more interested in things which feel real and are ridiculously funny. And so let the humor in the screenplay come out. Let the humor in the situations come out, but play it for real. Um, you mentioned Sir Ben Kingsley, also um, Harriet Sampson, Harris and Jane Curtin kind of bring to life these three elderly outcasts who are looking for a sense of purpose and obviously find it in a stranded alien. Um, talk to me about casting them. Did you always have them in mind? 
I did. We got, we were fortunate. They all responded within five days of receiving the screenplay, which tells me the same thing that you felt, Cortland, and I felt, which was, oh, this is unique and this yeah. is really special. And they all responded and said yes within five days. That's that's really high praise from Jane Curtin because she's been in a lot of alien things. <laughs> She's a lot. And I asked her and she said, nah, not, I don't particularly like science fiction, uh, uh, but she uh, she can she can do it all. She, she does it great. And I think the fact that this is also so grounded helps as well. Um, so you. Uh, I read that um, Ben Kingsley said that he thought as Jules is sort of like a King Lear story. Um, talk to me about collaborating with him about, you know, when he kind of took the character um, into his own hands. Yeah, you know, he 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 did say that to me at one point that he he saw it as King Lear. And I, I have to say, I, I scratch my head uh, because I didn't see it as King Lear necessarily. Yeah. Uh, and I think he then later said, well, but that was up until page 11. Then I saw different things in it. Uh, and it obviously has all these different elements and it's not a heavy tragedy. Uh, but uh, but yeah, and I what I try to do is not rehearse with these actors. And so I let them interpret it and bring what they're going to bring to the to the set uh, without my getting in the middle and mediating it uh but that that was the way he felt uh that he first entered the character is by looking at that element of it um speaking of other influences i know that you know he had a shakespearean thing with it for you were there any other influences that you saw in in the script yeah, I mean, people have compared it to other movies. Uh, I don't. I don't. I There are a few sh shots and things that inspired me, but I didn't say, oh, I'm going to make E.T. or I'm going to make for adults. I'm not going to make E.T. for adults. I'm not going to make uh, Cocoon, an older movie that, that many people love. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to treat this movie, Jules, for what it is. Uh, so I, yet with that, there are certain scenes where I'll use a shot that I saw. I think of a Robert Altman movie where the camera called the long goodbye kind of moves past yeah. the doctor out the window into uh, looking outside. And I use that kind of shot at one moment in the movie uh, when the characters are all talking about this alien and saying, I believe Jules, I trust Jules. And we go through it. And it's the moment that they were all signed on to to support Jules. And then we go out past them through the window and we see Jules turn and look at them. And so I stole that from, uh, from Robert Altman. He's a pretty good director. Uh, but that's, uh, that's more what I would do is find uh, moments where I could use a camera, a technique or an angle that uh, I remember from another movie. If you're going to steal from anyone, I mean, Altman's the way to go. Not a bad guy, right? Not a, yeah, bad, guy. Not, not a bad guy to steal from. Um, we've seen aliens visually interpreted over the years. I mean, pretty much since the beginning of cinema. Um, the design of Jules feels very specific uh, with the black eyes and the blue skin and humanoid features, yet it doesn't feel very costumey or kitschy. It feels very real. Um, talk to me about the process of figuring out, okay, this is what our alien is going to look like. Yeah, I knew right away. And Sir Ben said to me immediately when we signed on, he said, gee, I hope I'm not going to act against a, a ball on a stick, which is what you do with CGI. And I said, no, I, I don't know how to direct a movie like that. I need somebody live. And so we found this incredible actress, uh, Jade Kwan, to play the role. And I read a number of actresses and she was clearly the right one. Uh, and uh, her look was initially designed by Howard Berger. Uh, and then during COVID, we had to push a bit. And so it was uh, handed off to a guy, Josh Turi. And between Howard and Josh, they helped to develop the look of Jules. And I, they, they would start modeling things. And they're used to doing these horrific creatures uh, a lot of the time. And so for them, this was probably like, okay, this strange guy wants to make a an alien who's not a creature how do we do this it doesn't have long scary nails and things uh but we had fun and they start by doing a model uh howard started with a model a clay model uh and he and and uh and uh some of his team would sculpt the look and i'd say no i want more hollow cheeks or i want the bones here or i want uh, the ears further set back and so it was a collaborative process uh and i I love what they came up with. I know Jade has done a lot of 
um like I know she did a lot of stunt work mainly um is this her first time in like a creature performance role I don't know uh, okay. <laughs> it, uh it's certainly the only one like this yes uh she's been doing this for a lot of years uh so she might have doubled as a uh, as an alien or a creature you know I, we were really careful and we said we don't want it to be a creature we want it to be oh. an alien we want it to be someone that you could talk to and get lost in their eyes and that's uh, that's what she said she said every day on set even though i don't say anything in every scene i want to be present I want to be there so that the actor can read into my face what they want to read. And she brought that every day. So, yeah, uh, I don't think she's done anything like this. I think uh, there, there's a word is that she might actually be uh, might actually be out in costume today somewhere. I don't want to give it away. Oh, that's but cool. She might, they might be around in costume today. That's really, really cool. Great way to promote the film, too. That's really, really awesome. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily put immediately think of like aliens and aging and older friendship kind of going hand in hand, but the need to like figure out what is beyond and what's out there next and finding connection with, with the world in general um, is such a human thing. And the more that I think about it, it's like, oh yeah, that does make sense. Um, <clears throat> talk to me a little bit about mixing comedy with this idea of like adult elderly friendship i think you know it's a good question Cortland. most movies which are about aging or have aging as an element in it have a certain melancholy or yeah. sadness yeah. to it this movie certainly has emotion and people have told me oh i laughed hysterically and i cried and that's what you want at the end of the day you want to touch people's hearts and you want them to laugh and if it doesn't entertain then you're not doing your job. And so even a movie like Little Miss Sunshine, you you know, you want to laugh, but there's an, underneath it, there's embedded a story, under a message underneath it to that little girl that do what you love and don't worry about the rest. Yeah. Uh, and so that's what the sort of sweet spot for me, uh, which is tell a story which entertains, but has something embedded underneath that's meaningful. And I think Jules does that. It definitely does. Um, Mark, thank you so much for sitting with me today um, and talking about your wonderful film, Jewels. I really hope um, that people discover how amazing it is because it's really great. It's cinematic medicine. I told you earlier that I wasn't feeling well and um, watching it yesterday really lifted my spirit. So thank you so much. Portland, thank you. You know, it, it's really important, uh, he, the message that you bring to the world. Uh, we're going to be in a, a lot of theaters all over the country yeah. starting weekend and so uh if people do find that they love the movie please spread the word it's all word of mouth for these independent movies we're back in the we're back in the cinemas again and uh this is a movie that just depends on word of mouth so thank you Cortland. oh my gosh yes i will definitely be spreading the word thank you guys so much thanks for checking out the show if you like what we're laying down please subscribe to our channel and click the bell to receive notifications for all of our latest stuff 